Hey there and welcome to another one of my paranormal videos. I remember if you liked this then don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, like and comment down below so that I can find out what you thought and we can do some more of these going forward. Um, this one is going to slot right into the Metatherial Encyclopedia um, and it is the case of the Black Monk of Pontefract. Um, if you're not familiar with this case then you may have heard it knocking around the place more recently as 30 East Drive or even the Pontefract Poltergeist. Now, um, the, the case itself has probably been lifted to uh, fame, fame through the 2012 film When the Lights Went Out, um, which depicts a case, um, in, although it staged it in the 70s, it kind of showed elements, it's dramatisation of what happened in the actual, the actual property itself. Um, also, more recently, I believe Most Haunted um, staged their Halloween special there a year or two ago, um, and obviously, uh, try to investigate the location itself. I was actually at 30 East Drive as well in Pontefract. Um, and also, even more recently, uh, the American TV programme uh, with Trina Weidman and Nick Ross, I think, uh, Paranormal Lockdown, they also done a, well, a, a Paranormal Lockdown at 30 East Drive in order to see what was going on there as well. I've not seen that one, but um, if you have, don't forget to comment down below to tell me what you thought of that and or even the film, or even most haunted, to tell me what's going on, what you thought of them, uh, if they were good depictions of what the case may be about. Uh, the case itself um, was based around the Pritchard family um, who lived at Thursday East Drive in Pontefract. Um, and back in September 1966, um, most of the family were away in the West Country on holiday. Um, however, 15 year old Philip and his grandmother Sarah Skulls remained at home at Thursday East Drive. Um, they became aware of the temperature within the house becoming particularly icy cold, um, which was unusual for the time. Um, and they also then noticed in the living room, I believe, um, about halfway between the ceiling and the floor, a white dust began to materialise and then form and then drop over everything in the room. A little bit odd, however, also probably indicative with poltergeist activity. Um, they also noticed something pretty common that comes with poltergeist stuff, which was pools of water from in places around the house. Um, this was slightly odd for them, obviously, because they didn't know where it's coming from, thought there might be a leak, um, but then began to worry about other stuff. But what tipped it off was the fact that they also witnessed a wardrobe walk across the floor by itself, and apparently this wasn't linked to any kind of um, earthquake or anything similar to that. Um, also, the poltergeist was also known to rip up or tear up photographs of family members and things like that, so obviously didn't like them. Um, however, um, as the rest of the family returned from their holiday in the West Country, the activity seemed to siphon off and end and not really kick off anymore. And, um, and it, it remained that way, quiet as anything, for the next two years. Um, and about two years later, as uh, that's when the activity returned, and it returned particularly violently. In fact, it came back a lot more ferociously, a lot more violently. And at this point, it was then actually actuating and throwing pots and pans and messing up bedding. Um, it was even messing around with um, decorating materials, knocking them around the place and making, and it just basically causing general havoc, the usual kind of poltergeist activity that we know when they do sort of basically just mess up the place, throw things around, and generally aggravate the people that live in the house complete pain in the arse basically. Um, at this point the family being slightly religious and also worried about what was going on um, needed to get their home back into order so what they done is they went to the church um, and they brought in a priest who was called in to try and do an exorcism on the house to um, get rid of the spirits, calm them and get the house back in order. This, this is not an exorcism as in as in the exorcist and another person, this is an exorcism of the house as a blessing and that kind of thing. Um, however, the priest was presented with a floating candle, which he wasn't quite ready for. In fact, I don't think I'd be ready for a floating candle. Um, and this particular candlestick floating by obviously shook him a little bit because he then promptly left the property um, and left the advice with the, with the Pritchards to up and move, leave the home. Basically, not the best advice, um, but they couldn't fulfil that. They couldn't do that because that was their home and they couldn't afford to move on, so they had to stay there. So, they put up with more activity as it continued to heighten and get worse and worse and worse, with more things being flung around and chucked up and messed up and all that kind of stuff. And, it got and this activity developed to the point where they were then beginning to see a shadowy figure around the home. Um, and this shadowy figure also claimed the... Uh, they described it as having robes and a cow, and obviously because it was dark and shadowy, 
this is where the whole, in my mind, the whole black monk sort of element comes from. Um, because there's obviously a nearby element of, uh, I think, a ruined abbey or something as well that might have fed into this. This is probably why they came up with calling it the black monk of Pontypridd. So that's where the monk probably came from. Whether it was a monk or not, or whether it was an actuation of their own unconscious, or, or I don't know. Um, well, I guess one will never know, to be fair. Um, however, it then heightened to the to a new level of, of terrifying um, ability um, when the teenage daughter of the family, Diane Pritchard, um, was then grabbed and dragged up the stairs, um, most famously as well, um, literally, and you could see it, apparently they could see her clothes being tugged and pulled as she was going up, um, and she was screaming obviously because she was terrified by this particular activity because she was literally being dragged up the stairs by nothing. This is also, I believe that's also in the film as well, um, and it's also mentioned by several investigators that have been to the property that that's a possibility that could have happened or they link in with that sort of element of it. Um, when she was finally released out the top of the stairs by the entity or whatever it was, um, she, there were apparently finger marks found around her neck to, to show that she had been grabbed by something um, unseen and left a mark on her. Um, obviously unconclusive, <laughs> as it always is. Um, however, this then sparked the interest of um, the unexplained writer Colin Wilson, who then began to investigate the whole case in a lot of detail. Um, but it's interesting to note that after that particular point, when she was dragged upstairs, there's that huge outburst of energy and that massive outlay of terrifying the family with that particular point, that particular thing. After then, the activity actually began to curb and began to reduce and, and, and dissipate. So that seemed to be the end of the haunting, as far as we know. Um, Colin Wilson continued to look into the case and obviously he wrote about it and that's probably where uh, the producers of the film, when the lights went out, picked up from it. Uh, most haunted for their Halloween probably picked up from that in the film and Paranormal Lockdown also as well from the States they probably picked up from it there as well. Um, my thoughts on the case are thus. Um, recently it's taken a lot of notor notoriety, um, a lot of people have been there investigating. I believe the house is now empty as far as it's not occupied as anyone living there and in fact I think events companies uh, that do paranormal investigations and investigation teams as well go in there and investigate probably. I have not investigated the property myself. I would like to, just so I could tick that box. However, I am a little bit dubious, to be honest with you, because um, there's been no reported activity in a long, long, long time, and then all of a sudden, people have picked up on the house, it becomes available, everyone goes in there, and obviously, they pick up different things. Um, does this mean that by visiting a property that we believe was once haunted, we're actuating it and creating the activity ourselves? Possibility, I think, to be fair. And you can't rule that one out. So. Um, as the case itself, poltergeist activity, it does fit in with the standard poltergeist thing where you have teenagers involved as well. The first bunch of activity started in September 1966 when you had a 15 year old boy, Philip, in, entering puberty or in puberty. That amount of energy obviously could have kicked off the unconscious level of activation that caused this either a link with a spirit or he was actually doing those things himself unconsciously without realising and, and then later on that same thing happened again from his sister Diane when she was 14 years old. So it is a possibility that the activity isn't so much a entity or a spirit that was doing it, it could be possibly that it was the unconscious mind of these people. We don't know because we don't understand the mind that well. However, we have to look at all possibilities, right? Um, more recently, any activity has been picked up or looked at or anything like that, could it be could it be a spirit of the black monk? Possibly, we don't know. But it's more likely that it's the same thing but at a different level. It's not as heightened as it was with them, so it's not teenager kind of energy, but the energy could be of a group actuating it due to the fact that they're going to a property and their expectation is set to find something that was once there before. So <laughs> is 30 years drive haunted? Depends on your understanding of what haunt it is, which will probably be another video one day. Um, but <laughs> I'd like to go and visit 30 East Drive just to find out. Um, but that's the case of the Black Monk of Pontefract, or 30 East Drive, or the Pontefract Poltergeist, depending on how you look at it. Um, if you've visited 30 East Drive, then please like and comment down below because I'd love to find out about what you thought of the location, good or bad, haunted or not. 
um, and if you've got any ideas for other posts, um, other parts of the Metro Recovery Encyclopedia, or even places to investigate, please drop a comment down below or send me a message and uh, we'll talk about it. Cheers. Thanks guys, and remember, I'll see you soon. Bye.